Let's have a quick look at the paint node now in Silhouette. So I'm just going to add a paint node to my source footage and you can have a look at the paint tools we have on the left hand side. That the options and parameters for these tools will change depending on which tool we are using. So we have the black and white tool, which turns things black and white, and we can use different ways of making that into black and white here. Lovely. We'll undo that with Control or Command Z. We have the blemish tool, which is a great way of doing dust busting. Let's zoom in a little bit here. And what the blemish tool does is a combination of blurring and adding a bit of grain in so that we don't see what we're changing. So this is a great way of taking away small imperfections in skin or taking away dust or, you know, taking away blemishes as we have here. In the viewer, we can see the foreground, which is the original image or the output here. So we take a look with blemish, with blemish on and with blemish off. Cool. Okay. And again, let's just undo this a little bit. Now I've made quite a few paint strokes here and every paint stroke that I make is shown in my paint history down in the bottom left hand corner. And I can see these strokes. If I click on any one of them, I can see them here. I can shift select them to select multiple ones and delete them using the trash can. And when I try and do that, it says one frame of paint data has changed. Rebuild the affected frame. Now, this is interesting because Silhouette's paint system is actually a non-destructive raster based system, which means that you get the best of both worlds. You get the speed of raster paint with the non-destructive nature you usually find with a vector based system. So here, if I want to get rid of some of these blemishes, I can just hit rebuild and it will only get rid of the ones that I've told it to. If I want to get rid of all of them, I can then trash the whole thing and it will take me back to my original state. And this is also going to be really important when we want to paint on multiple frames, as well as being able to go back at any point in our history and take out some mistakes that we happen to make. So moving on quickly down the list of paint tools, we have a blur. Guess what the blur does? Yeah, it's going to blur things and we can choose how much it blurs things in the radius down here. We have clone, which we're going to come back to in just a moment. We have color, which lets us paint on a, an individual color. Hello, there we go. We have a color correct tool. So if I take this around there and want to change the colors on my, on my umbrellas, I can do that very easily. We have a drag, which lets me drag pixels over and smear them. Lovely. We have an eraser tool. So if I've made a little mistake here, da, 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 da. let's come back and erase that. And if I want to get rid of some of this here, but I want to keep in my line. I can do that as well here. I have a grain tool that is very, that is here for adding grain. And as we've seen with the blemish tool, this can help to just make a bit of natural grain noise to make our paint fit in better with the original image. We also have Mosaic, which is great for doing witness protection. And we can choose the size of our Mosaic, which is rather large in that particular one. We can choose the size of our Mosaic here. We have a Repair tool. And what the Repair tool will do is it can sample the first color that we choose. And then we'll just paint that color over for us. This can seem a little bit strange, but remember that the paint can go not just on all RGB channels, but we can also choose the R, G or B channel separately or paint directly on the alpha channel. So we can use the repair tool to very easily touch up small issues we have with mats or any other sort of alpha channel problem we might face. And finally down here, we have the scatter, which again is useful for things like witness protection. And this will just scatter the original pixels over a certain distance and we can choose our radius 
down in the parameters. But let's get rid of this. So I take all of the strokes that I've done so far and just trash those and rebuild. Thank you very much. And let's just have a look at our clone tool. And what I want to do is I want to clone out these people down here. I don't want them to be in my scene. I'm sure they're very nice people, but they're ruining my shot. So with the clone tool, what we have to do is we have to choose a source where we're going to clone from and then paint onto a target, which is where we're going to clone to. So the source, we can choose either to be the output, which is what we're going to see after the paint has been painted on, or we can choose from the foreground, which is the original image, or we can choose from one of five different clone sources, which we plug in on our node up here. And in this instance, I'm going to choose the output. And we can also choose which frame we're going to be painting from. At the moment, we're going to be taking it from the same frame that we're looking at. So we're only going to be painting out in space rather than space and time. And this relative tick mark says that when we move between frames, are we going to be painting from a single frame or from, again, the frame that we're on or an offset of the frame that we're on? And we'll see why this would be quite useful in just a moment. We can come down to the bottom here and we can start to have a look at our interactive mode now, which means we can start to see our offset between our clone source and where we're going to be painting onto. And this can be quite useful if we're trying to match up sources from different inputs here. And we've got different ways of seeing this, either overlay or a difference mode, which is the align mode, or having it split horizontally or vertically. And I'll turn my interactive mode off for now, because one of the other ways, if we're just doing a straight clone here, one of the ways that we can do it is just hold down shift key, drag the mouse over, let go of the mouse, and that's going to offset our clone source. So we can just come in and happily paint that out. I'm going to try to avoid a few repeating patterns here. And we can obviously change the, change the brush type down here. And this is the same for all of the tools that we have. So we can change the size, the opacity, the softness, the flatness, the angle, and the spacing. So I'm going to quickly come in and just clone the rest of this stuff. Let's just clone from here. There we go. And I can hold down the control or command key. And as I click and drag on that, I can change the size of my brush. And if I hold down control or command and shift, I can change the softness of the brush as well without losing my train of thought. And I do have a way of seeing the paint only as well. If I go to paint only here, it's going to show me my paint plus where, well, the alpha channel where I've painted it on. So what I could do is if I come into nodes here, I can quickly make a black color and composite, then take my color to the background and the paint only to the foreground. And you can see where it is that I've painted in. So that's useful to know because when, when we're exporting, we can be exporting out just paint only as well. So this view can be useful if we just want to make sure that we've got all of our areas sort of patched in. Lovely. All right. So let's not just look at the paint, let's look at the output again. And we can see the before and the after. Let's just tie, tidy that up a little bit. OK, now before we leave clone, I just want to show you one more thing that we can do with cloning with the time offset. So I'm going to come to my other uh, session up here. And all I've done on this one is just stabilized it out. So we've got a nice stabilized image here. If you want to know how to do the image stabilizing, you see that in the tutorial about compositing. But for now, let's focus on paint. So I'm going to add a paint in here. I'm going to come to my clone, which I'm at, and reset all of my source material here. So I want to paint out this guy. Where are you? I want to paint out this guy. 
And to do that, because I've got a static shot, I don't want to move my X and Y here. All I want to do is move my frame and my frame number. So I can come to interactive mode here, turn off relative for two seconds, and I can come back and find a frame where he's not in shot, which is going to be actually on frame zero. And if I turn interactive mode off, I can use the caps lock key to show my mix here, my overlay here, so I can see what I'm going to be painting out. That's quite a useful little feature. So here, all I have to do now is just paint over the dude. There we go. And I've got a little bit of this other guy here. So I can just come to another frame and then paint him out nicely as well. And when I'm happy with that, let's just move forward one frame using the X key. Use Z and X to move back and forth, and I can just paint him out one more time. So I can paint some of them out from frame nine, and some of them out from frame zero. Now it can be quite tedious to have to be popping back and forth between two different frames. So what I can do is I can set up two different brushes as presets here. So I can hit save and go click on one. And that's my first preset button. And I can come in and go frame nine, for example, and go save and click on two. Now I can move between those presets with Alt one and Alt two. So again, more time saving that you can be doing here. So taking out some of this stuff from frame nine and then swapping over the presets and painting out the rest of the stuff here from frame one. Before and after, before and after. And we can easily repeat that for the rest of the frames using a little feature called auto paint, which we're going to look at in the next tutorial. But that was a quick overview of how we use the paint node in Silhouette.